So let's find our mountain pose and get a nice warm up going. So inhale, bring your arms out, everything aligned in the mountain pose. Exhale, hands to your heart. Stretch forward, keeping your shoulders down. And exhale, hands behind you, fingertips clasped. Lift your heart, stretch your head back, and pivot at your hips coming on over. So go ahead and relax into your forward bend. Let things start stretching out. Kind of move your head around. Let the back of your neck get a little release. And then knees bent, ribs up, sitting bones down. Keep the chin in until last. And then lift it toward the ceiling as you stretch your head back or your upper body back bend. Keep breathing. And then inhale up and come back into mountain pose. And just feel all the circulation. Check that your bones are supporting you. And just relax all of the muscles. And then again, let's do that. Inhaling, stretching out. Exhale, hands to your heart. Stretch to the front. And exhale behind you. So clasp the opposite way and lift your heart. Stretch your spine open and pivot over into the floor. Tuck in your chin a little bit. Relax your head, your neck. Arms toward your head for a little shoulder. And lift your sitting bones and let the hamstrings stretch. And then slowly work your way up. And lift your heart. Stretch your head back and keep breathing. And again, inhaling, come back up. Just feel the circulation a little bit more over the whole body. And we'll do our side stretch. So arms out, palms toward the ceiling, over your shoulders. Clasp your hands, pull the arms back by your ears. Shoulders down, sitting bones down. Don't twist and lean to the side. So think about, you can look up toward that arm above you. That kind of helps to make sure that you're not leaning forward. And then push the foot you're leaning away from there. Get those ribs stretching apart a little bit. Inhale back up and switch your hands. Again, shoulders down, sitting bones down. Lift up and exhale to the other side. And again, reach out through your head, through your fingers, and down into your foot. Maximize that stretch along the side. Again, inhaling back to the top. Exhale, into mountain pose. So feel your spine. You notice your sides a little bit more stretched out. And inhale, arms reaching out. Palms to the ceiling, over your shoulders. Clasp your elbows and we'll do our twist. So stretch your spine apart. Remember, sitting bones down, crown high. Get those bones separated so they'll twist more and exhale to one side. Knees a little bent, stretch it up and exhale over. And as you come into your forward bend, just relax. Deepen as far as you'd like. So you can keep the weight on both feet while you're in this position. And then slowly work your way up. And again, heart high, but gentle on your low back while it's still twisting. Shoulders down, elbows back. And then inhale up, exhale to the center, switch things around. And again, back by your ear. Stretch out through your head and elbows, down through the sitting bones. Exhale and twist. Again, lengthen up and pivot over. And deepen on this side as much as your body wants. Keep the weight on both feet as evenly as you can. And relax. And inhaling, work your way up. And again, heart toward the ceiling as you pull your shoulders down and pull those back. And on um, inhalation, come up and turn to the center. Arms up, let's swan dive. So arms at shoulder level, pivot your chin and chest forward and then tuck the chin back in. 
and get your body as parallel to the floor as it feels right to you. Hips back, crown forward. You can always practice this with a mirror nearby. And then exhale, and as you deepen into that forward ragdoll position, just release any tension or pull in more if you like with your hands behind your hips. And then arms back to the front and slowly work your way up and into mountain pose. So I think we'll focus on abs. So kind of find your solar plexus in the middle of your torso and just kind of pull it back toward your spine and up toward your heart so you keep it activated. And let's step a little to the sides. No, let's step alive. So come into a wide-legged position with your feet parallel, facing forward. Thumbs into that hip crease and pull your body into, again, that parallel to the floor position. So if you can reach the floor, bring your hands down right under your shoulders. If not, you can keep them on your legs. And then sitting bones back, crown forward, and then keep the right hand either on the right leg or on the floor, and bring the left arm out, or the opposite arm out. Shoulder level, look at it, and then pivot it up to the ceiling. Reach the sitting bones and crown away from each other as you come into this twist. And then if you love it, you can bring your hand to the opposite leg or foot and the hand further behind you into the deeper twist, but only if you love them. So breathe, maximize or not, your choice, personal. And then bring the hand back to the middle if it's not, and straight up. And then follow that hand in the air back down, either to your leg or mat. So again, stretch your spine open. Keep that opposite hand down and bring the other hand out. And remember, this leg can be on the leg or on the foot. Or a block if you've got a block. Arm out to the side. And again, pivot it up, following it up into the twist. So the more you've got your sitting bones and crown reaching away, remember the more you can twist because those bones are separated. And again, stay there if that's a good twist or bring your hand to the opposite leg and the other arm in the air further behind you. Keep the spine as straight as you can as you maximize or minimize your twist. And then hand straight up and the other one down and follow the one in the air back to the mat for your leg. And then just straighten everything out through your spine. Get those core positions toned and liber and invigorated. And then hands to your ankles and slide up and into mountain pose. So feel the core maybe a little bit more activated and the spine. And then we'll go stretching up and pivot over and all the way to the mat or the floor. Sinking back on your heels, hands, palms up, forehead toward the mat, and relax. So deepen into your child's pose as much as you want. You can adjust anything through the ankles or the legs, or you can pound under your head if you can. So again, just take a moment there and feel now bring your arms out to the front, hands to the side of the mat, and then pivot up, slide your feet back, and all the way onto your belly. Head to one side, hands, palms up, and shoulders relaxed. If that's good, you can stay there, or bring your forehead to the floor. If you've got your head turned to one side, resting crocodile, go ahead and turn it to the opposite side so that you balance your neck and get a good stretch on both sides of your neck. And then bringing your forehead to the mat. Keep your hands, palms up or palms down. Next to you, down with a little bit more stabilizing through your shoulders, and then slide your chin forward. 
so we're going to do locust. It's a little intense. It strengthens the back and it also tones the core. So go ahead and bring your shoulders toward the floor as much as feels right. Chin forward. If that gets to be too much, you can put your forehead back in. And then slide your one foot back. Keep both hip bones down and raise your leg. So again, that little inner twist at the top of the thigh to make sure that your leg and kneecap stays toward the floor, top of your foot stays toward the floor <clears throat> as you lift your leg as high as it wants to go. So just keep pressing down through the hip bones. Keep that chin sliding forward, arms pressing into the floor, and the leg lifting as you stretch out through the toes, through the base of the toes. Maximize or not, your choice, lift it as high as you want to go, and then exhale and slowly lower it back to the neck. And just readjust, sink into your hips evenly, relax your shoulders down. You can bring your forehead to the mat if you need a little stretch on the back of the neck. And then as you get ready for the second side, again, hands, palms down, arms connected, chin sliding forward. Then slide back through the base of the toes on that opposite leg, hips down, and as you raise that leg up as high or not as it wants to go. So again, kind of <clears throat> base of the toes reaching out behind you continuously, chin sliding forward, chest down, and lifting that leg only as high as you like. Keep breathing, keep stretching, and lifting. And when you're ready, go ahead and slowly exhale down to the mat. Take a moment there, tuck your forehead to the mat, get the <coughs> shoulders releasing and the neck releasing. So we're gonna do both, <coughs> sorry, allergies. So we're gonna do both legs together this time. It's a little more intense. If you don't wanna to go too far, that's fine. You can just keep your hands, palms down at your side. If you wanna go further, where I recommend that you bring your hands and forearms under your body and press the hands down or make a fist or clasp your hands and get a really good support through that arm and shoulder. So find what you wanna do, kind of, Press your pelvic area down into your hands and arms. Chin slides forward, shoulders down. Both feet about hip width apart, slide them back. And lift them just a little or as much as you want. And again, that inner rotation so that the kneecaps and tops of the feet are toward the floor as much as possible. Chin sliding forward. Feet lifting only as much or as little as you want. Remember personal practice. It's going to be a little intense in the low back if you don't have a lot of strength there. So keep the feet low or lift them a little higher when you're ready. Keep breathing, extending out through the base of the toes throughout. Maybe lift a little higher. Maybe lift your chin as well if you love it. And as you exhale, bring the legs back down. Tuck your forehead to the mat. Release your arms, put them under your hands under your shoulders, and push back into child's pose. So as you get into child's pose, you notice that just gentle rounding through the lower back. If you keep your knees closer together, remember, you'll get more stretch through the lower back. Don't overdo it, because that was a pretty intense lower back activity if you got your feet very high. So again, personal practice, just do what's right for your body. And then inhaling, sit up and come into staff position. So sitting bones down, spine aligned, feet extended straight out, kneecaps and toes toward the ceiling. So again, <clears throat> if that's not naturally occurring, that inner thigh rotation helps to maintain the alignment of your legs. So core activated, ribs in and up. Now you don't want to be contracting too much through the core because you do want to still be breathing, but you also want to have that core active to support you. We're going to work into boat position. And as we do that, you want to keep your knees, <clears throat> me 
kneecaps straight, and we're going to bring the feet in until they're flat on the floor. So the knees are going to go up. You don't want them up to the sides. You don't want them in toward each other, but you want them straight up and aligned hips, knees, ankles, and toes. So we're going to focus on that solar plexus. So remember, that's between the ribs, beneath the sternum, above the navel. So that midsection of your torso, kind of find it. We want to make sure that that Action is solar plexus toward your spine and up toward your heart to get it activated, but not too tight. And then keep your hands, palms up outside your legs just to keep your shoulders released a little bit. You don't want them hunching up while we're doing this. And we're going to keep that core as the focus and just stay on your sitting bones and just lean back a little bit so you feel that core maybe activate a little bit more. So this is our starting position as we're here. And if this is enough, you don't have to go any further. But we're going to move the legs. So first we're going to do them one at a time. So just lift one foot a little bit off the floor. If that's enough, stay there. You can straighten the leg out till it's parallel to the floor with the bend still in the knee. And just, again, keeping that focus on activating the solar plexus, or you can straighten the leg completely if that works for you. If that makes your hip flexor work too much, you can lower the leg and keep it straight, or you can re-bend your knee and do it a little bit less intensely. So however far you want to go, it's up to you. Remember, personal practice, just keep the core working to give good support to the spine. And the upper body is still nice and straight. So shoulders down, core active, and extending out through the base of the toes. Oh, and if you start vibrating, you can go ahead and put that foot down anytime. Otherwise, I like to keep talking. So extend through the head, through the foot. And then bend your knee, put back down. And you can sit up and take a break with the core a little bit of release. Or you can stay in that semi-reclined position with the core a little bit more active if you've got really great So you know what we're going to do. We're going to do that opposite side. So yes, if you've got your legs fully extended, bring them back. Keep on your sitting bones, kneecaps up toward the ceiling, not leaning out with the knees or in. Hands, palms up, core active, and reclining just slightly to activate it, maybe a little bit more. And again, maximize or not as you're in this position. Stay there if that's where you need to be, or lift your other foot a little, or more, or straighten it out. Again, hip flexor, kind of pay attention to that. If it's saying, no, 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 I don't like this, bend your knee or put the leg lower. Otherwise, see if you can get them parallel at the thighs. Reach out through your head, shoulders are down, extending out through the Base of the toes, kind of spread the toes out if you can, and maximize or minimize whatever you're doing through that movement. And then again, lengthening, exhale, bring the foot back down, and either sit up and take a break or not, no choice. So you know where we go next. Both feet together. It's a little more intense. So remember, you never have to go any further than just the starting position or the slightly elevated feet or the parallel to the floor or the legs out. If you get your legs all out and you want a little help, you can always wrap your fingers around your big toes and then straighten the legs and it gives you a little bit more dynamic equilibrium there in that extended position and it makes it a little easier. So you can try that if you would like. So again, knees up, toes straight ahead, core active, shoulders down, hands, palms up to keep them that way. Lean back a little bit, staying on your sitting bones, never onto your sit. And again, stay there, good position, or lift your feet a little, or more, or all the way out. So as you get into the all the way out, if you prefer, you can hold those toes and keep extending out through the bottoms of your feet, and it makes it a little bit easier to be in that V-shaped position while you're still working your abs and you're getting a 
nice stretch to your hamstrings as well. Shoulders staying down, and you can keep your arms out to the side if it's a bit more challenging, so feel free to do that if that's where your abs are willing to go. And then exhaling, feet down, inhale coming up, and extend your legs out to the front, and just hold forward, and give yourself a little break. So take a moment there, breathing, just relaxing. And then we're going to roll back onto our backs. So as you come down onto your mat, just kind of release through the hips, through the legs, hands, palms up at your side, a little reclined integration, allowing your shoulders to relax down toward the mat. And then let your feet go a little out to the side or roll those thighs a little bit to keep the feet up toward the ceiling in your choice. And then slide the sitting bones a little bit toward your heels for that sit room support. And then bring your arms out to T position straight up from your shoulders. You can have them palms up or palms down for this one. Palms down is a little bit more stabilizing through your upper body, so your choice. And then we're going to press the low back down, that sacred area, bend your knees, bring the heels in near your hips, feet flat. So remember, a little rotation so that those knees stay straight up to the ceiling, not falling out or collapsing together. Sitting bones toward your heels, get a good connection into your spine. And then lift one leg and then the other, or both together. Up and flex your feet. So bottoms of the feet up toward the ceiling. So you'll notice already, this is a core position, core activating position. So again, focus on that solar plexus, down toward your spine and up toward your heart, getting that support from that midsection on your body. And again, just take a moment there, breathing. I'm going to do a little bit of work for the obliques for the sides of your body through those abdominals. So lift your heart toward the ceiling, kind of chin and chest first, and then bring one hand across toward your opposite leg. So leg, ankle, foot, wherever it goes, that's fine. And then release that down to the mat. And of course, we're going to do the same thing alternating. So chest and chin up. Hand coming across to the outside of that leg, ankle, or foot, and then back down. And I'll just do a few repetitions because the core likes repetitions. And down. Chest and chin leading each time, and then reaching across. And try to keep those legs as perpendicular to the floor as works for your body. And just make sure that you're activating first, coming up through the heart, and then going into that side stretch. So breathing, exhaling as you go down, inhaling maybe as you go up, and whatever works for you. And then coming back down, both arms on the mat. We're going to take the legs, and either one at a time or both together, slowly use that core to activate and lower your legs all the way down. And as you get all the way back to the mat, just relax. Let your belly move, deep breaths, and any tension. And then we're going to slide the heel or the sitting bones toward the heels and press that low back down. Again, bending your knees, bring the heels in and your hips feet flat. Knees straight up toward the seat. This time we're going to have the hands palms down at your sides or palms up, your choice, doesn't really matter. So we're going to slide the sitting bones toward the heels and get that whole back of your body connected to the floor, a little contraction through the abdominals, especially at the solar plexus. And then lifting your ribs as you slide the sitting bones back toward the mat, you're going to arch up from your shoulder blades all the way to your sitting bones. Up. Keeping that rib area, solar plexus area, moving up toward the ceiling. 
So maximize there. Keep the shoulder, shoulder blades down. And then slide on the sitting bones back toward the heels, getting that whole spine connected again, contracting through the hands. So we're going to do that again a few times. This is a low back strengthener. This is really good. It's one of the ones that PTs use for rehabilitation on people with low back injuries. So don't worry. It should be fine, but you can minimize or maximize as always in your personal practice. So lifting the ribs, coming into that arch from the shoulder blades to the sitting bones, and then sliding the sitting bones and contracting through the abs to pull the whole spine to the neck. So a little bit or a lot, you can minimize or maximize, as I said, depending on what your body needs. This is a really good one to do in the morning. It activates your spine, it tones your core, gets you ready for the day. So go ahead and maximize or minimize through that core work and lower back strengthen. And then coming back to a neutral position, just relax. You can extend your legs out again and turn your hands, palms up a little reclined integration as you feel that circulation through that midsection. <clears throat> And then again, we're going to slide the sitting bones toward your heels, connecting that lower back sacrum area. Bend your knees, heels in near your sitting bones. Turn your hands, palms up. And we're going to lift through the heart, through the chest, chin up toward the ceiling, and extend your hands, palms up, and reach them toward your feet. And again, we're going to work the sides of that oblique muscle. So as you're in this position, we're going to keep the body facing straight up, that core active, pulling down maybe a little toward the mat, toward the floor. And then reach your hand toward the side, toward the toes on one foot. And the other hand is just staying shoulder level, palm up. And then rotate back to the center. And we're going to do the same side for, well, let's say five times. So once more, and you'll feel the contraction through that side, through that oblique, as you reach toward your toes, and then return. The other side's stretching out a little bit as well. It's the contraction that we're working to make sure that we're getting that oblique, getting a little bit more toning and activation. And then after you do that four or five times, come back and exhale upper body back down. So if you're feeling it too much in your neck, you're probably tucking in your chin as you're coming up, and that's going to strain your neck and you want to be lifting from the heart. So we're going to do that once more, of course, for the other side. So once more, hands, palms up, shoulders down, chest, chin lifting, and focusing through the heart. Reach for the other side, and coming back to the center. And again, just maximizing or minimizing that contraction on the side you're moving toward, keeping the whole body straight up toward the ceiling with the lift through the heart, not the neck. And again, do four or five to that opposite side before you come back to the center and exhale back down onto the mat. So again, just feel your body. Hands out to the sides, T position, palms up. Sitting bones toward your heels, and we're going to bring one leg or both legs at a time up to the ceiling. So get both legs perpendicular to your body, and extend out through the bottoms of your feet. And we're going to go into our perpendicular position. So contracting through the abs, getting that core active. And we're just going to do one leg or both legs at a time, moving again down to the mat. And as you get just above the floor, if you want, you can kind of push that through the bottoms of your feet and activate a little more through the core. And then let's go. You kind of feel the core. A little more circulation. 
We're going to do a twist, and oh, we'll just do our regular bent knee twist. So press again, sitting bones toward your heels, bending your knees, bringing them in, feet flat on the floor. And extend your arms out to position, palms up, palms down, no choice. Palms down, get slight shoulders a little bit more activated to the neck. So go ahead and press your back down and lift your feet, keeping your knees right above your Putting your knees right above your hips, yes, okay. And then rolling your knees to one side, turn and look toward the other palm. So knees coming down, put your feet down if you need a little support, or put some padding underneath your knees, and let that lower back get its twist. Keep the shoulder, shoulder blades down, middle back twist, and turning your head with that arm behind you, upper back, neck and shoulder twist. So do what's right for your body. Remember, especially twists need to be whatever your body is appropriate to do. Take a few breaths here. If you like the low back twist, remember you can bring your knees toward your elbow for a little bit more lengthening and movement through that lower back twist. Take a breath, just relax. When you're ready to roll back onto your back, bring your heels toward your hips first, and then roll back up, knees above your hips. You can bring your feet to the floor if you need a little release, or just keep them right above your hips. And then when you're ready to twist to the other side, feet up, knees over your hips, and roll the knees, turn your head the other direction. And again, maximize or minimize. Find your position. Do your padding if you need it. Shoulders and shoulder blades down. Head turning as much or as little as you need. Knees to the floor or up toward your elbow if you like the extra low back look. Or leave them wherever they are. And again, maximize or minimize whatever's right for your body. And then to release, again, heels toward your hips, rolling onto your back, and feet to the neck. Slide your legs out, hands near your hips, palms up, shoulders releasing down, and let your belly move as you breathe into our corpse position, relaxation. So take a few moments here to breathe and relax. Let that belly core area just kind of soften and sink. Lots of work through the spine, through the sides, through that torso. So let your whole middle body just have a little bit of extra softening. Hands palms up. Shoulders releasing down. Let's either knees up toward the ceiling or slightly out. And relax the lower body. Release any tension in your jaw, your face, your throat. And just let your body grow heavy and sink into that surface beneath you. Fully and completely relaxed into that earth embrace. And as you breathe, just let your body release from your mind. And any new thoughts coming to you, let them release as well. No need to remember the past, no need to anticipate the future. Just let the thoughts drift in and out as easily as you can. And as your thoughts float more easily, just releasing without awareness. Allow your attention to turn inward, finding that peace within. Deepen into the awareness of the peace, feeling your body, feeling your mind, feeling your whole being as peace.
And as always, if you want a little more relaxation this morning, go ahead and stay released into that piece. Otherwise, we can draw energy and awareness back to the moment, to your body. Breathe in more deeply, begin stretching gently whenever you are ready. And if you're ready for your final yoga hug of appreciation, then bend your knees, connect your back, and draw your knees toward your chest. Allow yourself a little hug of appreciation, letting your body know you appreciate its work in yoga and work it does every day for you. And when you're ready to release, just feet down, roll to the side, and sit back up, and get ready for whatever's ahead for you the rest of the day. And thanks for joining me this morning.